Well, good afternoon everybody. How y'all doing? Pretty good here and welcome to the channel. Hey, I don't know if you all have heard or not, but there is a new Toyota Tundra in the works. That's right. They are going to redesign it, redo it, remanufacture it. It's going to be a new model. A new generation Tundra is coming. And I've got five, really six, things that I hope they don't change. You know, everybody's talking about the changes and what they're going to do to it and what it's going to be when it's all said and done. But there's a few things I don't want them to change. And we're going to talk about those right now. Okay, the first thing is, and most importantly, is power. The Tundra has a ton of power. Whether you get the 5.7, or the 4.6, which by the way, they've already made that change. You can't get the 4.6 anymore. But I hope they don't do anything with the power. When I talk about power, I'm talking about horses under the hood. I'm talking about torque. I'm talking about get up and go oomph. Now, for you towing guys out there, of course, it's got to have all that to haul those big loads you have out there behind the truck. Now, you can see right here, I've got the 4.6, I've had the 4.5 before, and it is an awesome, awesome motor. So I hope, if you're listening, Toyota, when you put those new hybrid motors in there, or electric assist, or turbocharged, whatever you're going to do, at least give us as much power as we've had before. I'm not so concerned about gas mileage, it matters. But if you give me higher gas mileage and take away my power, I'm not buying it. I'm just saying. All right, next let's talk about view, forward view. Now, I'm not talking about the gorgeous front of the truck. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm talking about the perspective, how you see out of the truck when you're sitting in the driver's seat driving it. Let's go hop in here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I've had other trucks before. The Ram, the F-150, even an old Chevy 150 years ago, and they were horrible. It was like looking over an ocean of hood when you're trying to see out of the front of the truck. Now, in the Tundra, you guys can see, and I don't know how much of a perspective you're going to get. I got you right up here beside my head. This is what you can see when you're looking out of the front of the Tundra, and it is awesome. They've got it designed in such a way the driver's area, or the cabin if you will, is front facing or forward enough that you don't feel like you have this gigantic long hood in front of you to try to place on the road. And I really like that. I think it makes the Tundra easier to drive, and I would argue that it even opens up the market a little bit to people who maybe are a little bit gun shy about jumping into a big full size truck because they're afraid of it. They're afraid of trying to put it on the road. They think that if they're driving a big truck, it's going to be somehow horribly difficult to drive. Now, I will say it is easier, noticeably easier, to drive a Tundra than the other big trucks. And when I, when I say that, I don't mean that you can't do it. I just mean that you don't have to think about it or be as overly aware as you do in some of the bigger Diff not bigger, but differently designed trucks where it just feels more difficult to place them on the road. I hope they don't mess with that in the new redesigned Tundra. Next up is the overall size of the Tundra. I mean, you can see it is a pretty big truck. You can see it here in my garage, and this is a decent sized garage, but it still is a pretty big truck. Now, what I hope they don't do is somehow shrink it down, turn it into something more mid-sized. You know, maybe to reduce the weight a little bit, maybe to get those better MPGs that people complain about all the time. I hope they don't do that. You know, there's a rumor out there that they're going to build the Tundra and the Tacoma on the same platform. Now, if they do that, I would say one of the trucks is gonna change. Either the new Tacoma, once they get around to redesigning that, it's going to get even bigger, and I don't really see that happen. And the Tacoma, I wouldn't call it a small size truck. I'd really call it mid-size these days. Um, I can only see the Tundra shrinking if they do that. 
And I hope not. We want a, a full-size truck. When you buy a full-size truck, you don't want to walk out with a, a Datsun. You want to walk out with a Tundra. So I hope they don't mess with the overall size. And the other thing, speaking about appearance, is I hope they don't square the truck up. You know, turn it into a Chevy looking thing or a Ford or something like that that has that old boxy square look to it. You know, the Tundra looks awesome with its curves and its bumps and all of the nice styling designs that they have in it, even though it's a truck. It sets it apart, it makes it look unique, and it makes it desirable. Okay, next up, let's talk about seat comfort. You know, you take a look at the, or the Tundra seat, and it is awesome. Now, I don't have the fine Lexus grade leather. I have had leather. I had leather in the Crew Max, and I like that as well, uh, probably equally as much as I like the cloth here. They're nice, comfortable seats. They fit you well. They've got all the adjustments and stuff here on the side. You got your lumbar and everything else that you need. They are very, very comfortable. The headrest is in the right spot. Everything is perfect. The seat is also big enough. It's wide enough. I mean, let's face it. We are the largest people on the planet, us Americans, and we ain't getting any smaller. So it's my hope that they don't change, you know, they're doing this big whole remodel, right? I hope they don't touch the seats. They leave them the way that they are. I took a trip, I've mentioned this before, from Ohio to Texas. It was about all said and done, I don't know, 26 hours, something like that, that we sat in this truck and it was perfect. Perfectly comfortable. I didn't have any rear end soreness, you know, from sitting in the seat all that time and I loved it. So I hope that they leave it alone, they don't screw with the seats. Again, look at those things. They're nice, they're big, they're comfy. Why mess with them? I wouldn't do it. All right, next up is the interior itself. And I'm talking about the size. It is cavernous inside the Tundra. It doesn't even matter which model you go with. The Crew Max, which is even bigger, it's like double cavernous or the double cab, which is what I have right here. I mean, when you take a look inside here, look how much room, how much space there is in here. It's just amazing. Your passenger is all the way over there. You're sitting over here, all the way over there. You can have both arms, you know, you and your passenger, not both of yours. On the armrest there, there's no battles, there's no fights, there's no jostling for position. Plenty of space and plenty of room in here. You never feel cramped. And in the back, and again, this is the double cab. Look how much space is back here. Now I left one seat up over there. You can see I could haul maybe a cache of groceries or something there. Maybe if you're a hunter, something you got out in the woods that day. I don't know, although I think that'd be better off in the monstrous bed here. But there's plenty of room inside here for the kids, two or three adults, plenty of space in here so you can be comfortable. This is where I usually ride as far as my seat goes. Plenty of knee or leg room here on both sides for your passengers in the rear so you don't have to mess with that. We have an open area here in between the seats so we can still sit someone in the middle. Nice and comfy back here. I know when we took that trip from Ohio to Columbus and then back again, we put the dog back there. Now, he's a pretty good sized dachshund and he never once complained that he didn't have enough room back there. Let's keep the size we have. It's cavernous and we love it. Now, this last one might be more personal preference. I don't know. I like it and that is modability. The sixth item, the bonus item if you will, is modability. You know, one of the reasons I love the Toyota product, particularly the Tundra and the Tacoma up there, is because I can make it my own. You know, there are so many things out there that you can do from LED lights to side steps to exhaust. You can even supercharge it if you want to. Pretty cool. 
Things that you can do yourself. I don't know if I tackle the supercharger myself, but you can do it. Things that you can do yourself to make the truck your own. I love that about the Tundra. I hope that they don't come out with something that's so crazy different or they take away all of the modding options that we have as far as being able to do it yourself. I like to put my own touch on my trucks. I like the satisfaction of doing it myself. And selfishly, it is my business. I make YouTube videos. Anyway, I just wanted to get on here and go over six things that I hope they don't change with the new generation or the next generation Tundra. There's a lot of talk out there about what they're going to do. These are the things that I hope they don't. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if I left out anything. Let me know if you agree with me. Or do you want something completely different? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on the web. Have a great day. Bye.